Hi, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, PhD. I wanted to address the subject of my regional home, the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. As I've said before, I live just three miles north of Mexico, so I am literally on the border. I have heard all sorts of really odd rumors about the tremendous crime wave that is happening here. If there is a tremendous crime wave, will somebody please tell me? As far as I know, there is not. Well, is there crime? Yeah, there's crime everywhere. Is there um, a lot of crime? I don't know. What do you mean by a lot? There is crime. But is there a tremendous crime wave, as uh, it was recounted to me over the phone by one or two people? No. No. Place is functioning the way it usually does, which you could argue was either good or bad, depending upon your perspective, I suppose. Um, the Rio Grande Valley of uh, Texas um, where I am specifically is in Hidalgo County, which is the warmest county in the state of Texas. Um, I'm, I am on the same latitude as Miami, Florida. Now, it's not as warm here as Miami uh, for reasons that I don't know. I am not a meteorologist. I assume it has something something to do with the Gulf Stream, but that's just my guess. Um, but it's warm. We basically have two seasons. We have summer and we have spring. Spring just started a few days ago. I looked at long-term forecast and yep, we are in spring. Uh, high temperatures in the spring range between the upper 60s and the mid 80s. In the summer, temperatures tend to be in the 90s and hundreds. Sometimes it'll be in the hundreds for three months in a row. So that time of the year is basically over, although there are always exceptions. I suspect we will have days in the hundreds during the spring as well. Then sometime in February, summer will come back. And it'll come back in, in uh, very suddenly with, with no forewarnings. A lot of people around here don't like the summer. I do. Uh, I moved down here because of the warm weather and the palm trees. That's what I like about this area most. But to talk about some of the more negative sides, I suppose you could say, of this region. This area is extraordinarily corrupt in virtually every area imaginable. Mostly, I think of medical corruption, a tremendous amounts of medical corruption, but just corruption with buying a car, having your car repaired. I've been, people have attempted to rip me off when I've tried to buy clothing. Uh, I literally paid for the clothing and the clothing was never furnished to me. So I had to call my bank. The bank refunds the money. I don't know what they did with the clothing store. It is literally a store. You would think that might happen with um, online ordering or telephone ordering. But no, this is a store right on Griffin Parkway, just about two miles from where I live here in Mission, Texas. So I don't know what's going on. When I was at the um, Palm Fest which is an annual three-day fair uh, held in the convention center in, um, well, right, right next door to me. And uh, I was at the convention center and uh, I was at the grounds surrounding the convention center, which are also beautiful. Uh, the performing arts center is about maybe, I don't know, about a hundred yards uh, away from the convention center, there is a large pool with a waterfall and all these unusual birds, tropical birds that I've never seen before. Many of them have 
apparently no prior experience with humans. If they did, they'd be afraid of us, I think. But since they have not, they're, they're not afraid. They're basically tame. Uh, and, and they just will literally walk up to you or walk by you. Um, remember, I was sitting on uh, outside of a burger place here. Um, and uh, a bird was walking by along the edge of the wall of the restaurant. And I started talking to the bird. I love birds. I said, hello, hello, birdie. How you doing? How you doing? Hope everything's okay with you, birdie. <laughs> Talk with the bird for about two minutes. Next thing I know, the bird, I'm not sure, flew up, jumped up right onto the table where I was sitting eating my hamburger and french fries and just sat there staring at me with its head cocked slightly to the left. Very cute bird. It wasn't the most beautiful bird I'd ever seen. It was kind of a gray, gray bird, but it was beautiful. The bird was right there. Now, I suspect the bird was looking for food. And in retrospect, I don't know why I didn't provide the bird with food. I could have easily taken off some of the, uh, the bread from the bottom of the, of the hamburger and given it to the bird. But I was just so entranced by the idea of a bird being right there looking at me that I it never occurred to me until after the event was over. Then the bird, I guess, eventually got tired of me or uh, tired of waiting for me to feed him and flew off into the sunset. Well, actually, it wasn't sunset. It was more like the middle of the day. Um, so the birds are nice. Many of the people here are wonderful. But there is just so much corruption in Every area of life, whether it's, as I said before, medicine, automotive, but anything. People will just try to rip you off if they can. I was almost ripped off by a person who was installing my electronic doorbell. I caught him. Well, what did that mean? Nothing really. He basically just... I guess he's kind of used to people occasionally noticing when he's trying to rip them off. And he basically said nothing. He just finished his job and left. He was trying to get me to buy more equipment, which I didn't need. I had all the equipment that I required. Um, it happens constantly here. People around here tell stories about it. It's, it's like it's like folkloric about how corrupt this area is. Again, when I was at that uh, festival, that fair, the Palm Fest, I was chatting with a security guard. I always like walking up to security guards because they, they seem to have an inside knowledge of things that other people don't. And uh, got into a conversation with him, very nice, friendly guy. Um, and uh, and I, I started talking with him about the corruption. And he said, yeah, um, you know, around where I live, I don't know where that is in relationship to me. We didn't say, I suppose, either McAllen, where the fair was, or where I live in Mission, or one of the other cities that is right around here. He said, around here, we call that the spillover effect. The spillover effect from Mexico. This area, until very recently, well, 20, 30 years ago, was essentially a suburb of Mexico. There was hardly anything here except housing. Many people worked in Mexico, in one of the many cities that are on the Mexican side of the border. It's all the Rio Grande Valley on both sides of the border. Um, I am three miles from Mexico, and right there, there you cross over the border, and on, on the right-hand side, there's a huge medical center, apparently one of the best medical centers in Mexico, at least that's what I have been told. So there were really hardly any jobs available on the U.S. side of the border, and that was 
that was indicated by the fact that there were no roads really of any of any real value uh, leading outside the Rio Grande Valley to other parts of Texas and hence to other parts of the United States, unless you wanted to drive down country roads. And believe it or not, it is still like that. Now, we do have a couple of interstates right around here. They, they are connected to each other, but they are not connected to any other interstate. So, for example, the closest cities besides the ones here, McAllen being the main one, heading north uh, are San Antonio and the state capital of Austin. Takes a long time to get there because of the uh, bad quality of the, road, of the roads. And so people don't usually go there. People generally stay here. But because Mexico has become so dangerous because of the cartels, and the cartels are here in uh, the United States, too. There's uh, right near me is, is a home, an adjoining town is a home for the cartels. They have second homes there. And for whatever reason... The Border Patrol does not seem to bother them. Uh, whenever somebody comes over unexpectedly across the border, then the Border Patrol will show up and there'll be a chase. And generally they will catch the suspects. And I'm not sure what they do with them then, either arrest them, put them in jail or just send them back over the border. Uh, it's drug smuggling. There are tunnels which lead from Mexico to Texas. Many of the, of the drug smugglers use those tunnels regularly. Um, when the Border Patrol finds a tunnel, it'll destroy it, but then a new tunnel will be just be built in its place. They must have some type of equipment where they can build those tunnels relatively quickly. It doesn't take long for the tunnels to be up and operative again from everything I've read. Um, and so this particular area where I am is one of the major places that drugs are smuggled into the United States from Mexico. That's an example of spillover. The spillover of corruption. The fact that there are cartel members here, here, right next door to me. And yet Border Patrol basically leaves them alone. Um, now, do these cartel members pose a serious challenge or um, criminal threat to this area? No. They want to stay as far away from Border Patrol, state police, city police as they possibly can. They are not here to cause trouble. Now, they cause trouble in Mexico. They blow up cars, blow up buildings, all these things. Pretty horrendous. We read about it in the papers, and I read about it on Google News. So the stuff that goes on there is really, really bad, and it's literally just three miles away from me that this stuff is happening. It's tragic. It's a real tragedy. And I, and, and I have met some of these Mexicans, because Mexicans travel here to McAllen and Mission, here in Hidalgo County, Texas, all the time. And um, we don't travel there that much because of the danger, but they travel here. I mean, they're used to the danger. So what, I mean, they're in, immersed in it. So I guess there's no real uh, immediate threats to them. But um, for us, no, most of us don't go there. And most likely I will not go there. There are other parts of Mexico, one place in particular that is relatively safe. It is a place for medical tourism, but just tourism in general, a lot of restaurants, a lot of clothing stores. Um, I have a personal friend that I've made who runs a leather goods store. It's a beautiful place. Really, really, really nice, that particular city. And it's a very Mexican city. 
nothing uh, unusual, meaning it was not created for tourists. It is a Mexican city that was gradually transformed into a Mexican vacation spot for Americans and I guess some Canadians. To get in there, you don't need a passport or a birth certificate or a driver's license. To get back into the United States, you need either a passport or a birth certificate. But the uh, surprisingly, the, the last time I went, I forgot to bring those with me. And they let me back into the U.S. with my driver's license. They're very relaxed when it comes to Mexicans on the border. And when it comes to Americans crossing over into Mexico, there's no there's no check. You just walk right in. Nothing happens. There's no there's a sign that says entering Mexico. That's all it is. You 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 cross over a bridge over the Rio Grande River, and there's the sign. Then you're in Mexico, and you you just walk right into the city. Beautiful city, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful city. And um, I would recommend anybody who comes to Hidalgo County to make sure that at least you visit Mexico once, but go to one of the safe places. The tragedy, the real tragedy, is not the crime that we have here from the spillover effect into the Rio Grande uh, area. Um, or Hidalgo County in particular. The real crime is what takes place on the Mexican side. I spoke with this Mexican guy once about a year ago. And I said, uh, just to get his response, are you happy in Mexico? And he said, no, no, it's very, very dangerous. I felt like crying, but I resisted doing that. I didn't think that would be appropriate. I seem to cry a lot these days. But that, that was not an, an appropriate occasion to cry. I didn't, didn't want to make him feel bad, and I can stop myself from crying. I don't have to cry. I can feel bad without crying. But nonetheless, it was a it was a real tragedy seeing that kind of situation that existed um, in Mexico from this guy who was in McAllen, Texas, visiting the Palm Fest. Wonderful. Palm Fest is wonderful. There's entertainment. There are exhibits, all sorts of things like that. Very attractive. This this past uh, year, about three weeks ago, they had a planetarium set up, really nice planetarium, and uh, and they tell you what all all the, all the oh, if you you've been to a planetarium, you know what it is. They, they tell you what what this is, what Big Dipper, Little Dipper, all the stuff. They point out uh, Polaris and the North Star. Uh, very nice, but um, again, the people I feel worst for. Not the, not the, not us. However difficult life may be here for those of us who live here in Hidalgo County, in the sense that we get ripped off or almost ripped off almost all the time. It seems like almost anybody that can rip us off will. And this is a Roman Catholic area. I've always said that the way that you judge whether somebody is an atheist is not by asking them, do you believe in a god, a goddess, or gods and goddesses? But it's by observing their behavior. If their behavior is ungodly or ungodly, that person is an atheist. And that person may not even know it himself or herself. That's the true judgment to me that I make of what is an atheist and, or who is an atheist and who is not. I don't care what people say. People can say anything. Maybe it comforts them. They go to, maybe they go to mass. 
Maybe they confess their sins before the priest. But, but if so, then they go out and commit the same sins again. It's a real tragedy. And I see it again all the time here. But at the same time, remembering that it's 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, whatever, worse on the other side of the Rio Grande River. And that's what makes me really upset. As a Maoist third worldist, I desire to see the emancipation of the third world from imperialism, colonialism, and cultural hegemony. That's what I want more than anything else in the world. That's what I want. I want to see the well-being of my neighbors just three miles to the south in Mexico. And yet it hasn't happened yet. I hope it happens soon. This is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. Have a pleasant evening and an even better day tomorrow.